Well, glory. Welcome to Healing Health. I'm Pastor Virgil, and we're here for one purpose, and that is to help you receive the healing that God purchased for you through the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary, on that cross. We're convinced that God wants you to be healed, and we want you to receive it. We found a few things that help people do that, and we've been looking at some of those things. Talking about the wonderful part of being a community of the people of God and tapping into all the different gifts and things that are available to us through that connection. We've talked about agreement. We've talked about being in one accord. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, something that's just really close to my heart. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth, he said, When I came to you, brethren, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know among, nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Our speech and our preaching is supposed to be with demonstration of the Spirit, and of power. What does that even mean? In uh, 2003, Kenneth E. Hagin prophesied. He said, uh, make your church not only a word church, but a Holy Ghost church. Put the word first always. Move in the Holy Ghost in line with the word, and the glory shall be made manifest. The glory shall even be seen by many, and the blessings of the Lord will flow like a mighty river. I had a prophecy back in 1992 where the Lord said we were going to have to contend for the supernatural power of God in our churches and uh, that we have the temptation to reduce the move of God to a repeatable formula. It's just human nature. We want to be in control of things. We want to control our own lives. We want to control the service. God, on the other hand, wants to be in control and he wants us to follow his fresh move and touch every service, every gathering, and even in our daily walk with him However, that can be challenging. Back in the 1970s, there was a McDonald's hamburger commercial. Some of you may remember. And they sang a little song about the Big Mac hamburger. You may remember that? And one of the, the lyrics was, uh, Two all-beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. <laughs> now, if you break that down, you could get uh, two all-beef patties. Whether it was all-beef is certainly open to discussion, but... The, uh, uh, you could get some lettuce, you could get some tomatoes and cheese and pickles and onions and a sesame seed bun. The only real difference between the Big Mac sandwich and everybody else's sandwich was the special sauce. And dear friends, in, in our crowd, I, I believe that's what's supposed to be the big difference between us and the other people around us. We got the special sauce of the Holy Ghost in our midst. Uh, back in the day when I first came into this move, uh, we used to uh, pray in tongues, speak in tongues, uh, uh, sing in tongues in almost every meeting, uh, both corporately and then even if we were just two or three of us together, we would have home meetings and it was a common occurrence to uh, uh, get a, a chair and put it in the middle of the room and then have everybody, if somebody needed prayer would sit in that chair, we called it the hot seat, and everybody in the room would come lay their hands on that person and begin to just pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in other tongues. And uh, if you've never been around any of that, then probably make you a little nervous. But man, oh man, powerful things happen. People got healed. Deliverances came. A wonderful thing. There was a presence of God in those places you just can't imagine. It was not unusual, even in the larger meetings, where there might be thousands of people, when people would just uh, all together be worshiping. Worshiping in the Spirit and the presence of God would be so powerful. You see, what we call the the baptism with the Holy Spirit is the basic entry point into supernatural Christianity. It's the special sauce that's on the churches that are filled with the Spirit. We spoke about this in the, in the lesson number 40 in this series, if, if you want to go back to there and look that up, about how to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. But when a believer is filled with the Spirit, he or she receives the ability to speak in a brand new language what the Bible calls speaking in tongue. It may be a, a human language, or it may be a language understood only by God and the angels. 
Uh, when I was first filled with the Holy Spirit in 1980, that was a very common thing, but it's been almost uh, uh, legislated out of our church services today. Uh, in light of our previous discussions about the nature of agreement, and more especially the power of being in one accord, having the same passion together as we pray, the incredible benefit of speaking in other tongues becomes even more apparent. Because when we begin to pray together in other tongues, uh, there are two specific things that always can be counted on, and one of them is unity is guaranteed if we're all praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because He's giving us the words that we're saying. Romans chapter 8 says the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness when we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. The Father knows all hearts and knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. When we pray together in other tongues, we are in harmony with God, in harmony with one another, and we are praying God's will. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, If I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying, uh, but I don't understand what I'm saying. The Amplified Bible says, My spirit by the Holy Spirit within me speaks. So the Holy Spirit gives me the word to speak. Whatever else we do, when we speak in tongues, we eliminate the restraints, the intellectual restraints that come from our culture, our education and backgrounds, our religious training, and we give voice to the very words of God concerning the subject at hand. The Spirit prays the will of God through us. So unity is guaranteed. The other thing we can guarantee when we're praying with other tongues or singing with other tongues, as he says in 1 Corinthians 14, 15, that praise is perfected. There's power in the praises of God's people. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. In Psalm 22, 3, when we lift our hearts and our voices to him in praise and thanksgiving, there's a presence that's hard to ignore. When two or three are gathered in his, his name, he's here among us. In Ephesians, Paul said, don't be drunk with wine which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Songs from the Spirit means songs given directly by the Holy Ghost. When we pray together in other tongues, we are always give, singing songs given directly by the Holy Ghost. So when we pray and sing in tongues, our spirit is praying. Our head doesn't understand. So when we're singing in tongues, we're worshiping Him, or as He said in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, He said we're giving thanks well. Well, when we do that, what's happened? We're in one accord. And when the people of God come together and get in one accord to worship Him, powerful things happen. Here's the point. Corporate prayer and praise in other tongues is the secret sauce of faith and power that belongs to us as Holy Spirit and Word people. It's the thing we have at our disposal that takes our faith formulas and transforms our doctrines into experiences. Don't let it become a side issue in your quest for healing, and don't try to eat the hamburger without the secret sauce. If you've never experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, take a little time to investigate. You can go to PastorVirgil.com and find information there. As I pointed out, lesson number 40, uh, just a few weeks ago, you can find that there. You can also uh, find the, the uh, printed guide for how to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit on that site at the, under the tab that says Real Disciples Guide. Look for lesson number five, and it'll tell you just exactly what to do. Uh, spend some personal time if you're already filled. Spend your personal time praying and singing in other tongues. Get by yourself. Lock yourself in the bathroom, whatever you got to do. I walk the dog myself and uh, get out in the desert and where nobody but the lizards know what I'm doing, but God knows what I'm doing. Then look for churches or groups that you can be part of a prayer group that prays in tongues. Uh, there are plenty of them around. They're usually, um, um, if you ask about the church, somebody will tell you. Try to find a church or a group that incorporates, listen to me, singing in other tongues in their worship. It'll be a blessing to you, and you'll know that you're in one accord with other believers. We're going to take a look in our next lesson as something that's going to help you immensely, and that's the joy and the freedom that comes from having good leadership in your life and being submitted to that. I think you're going to find it to be very, very helpful in finding a place to receive your healing. For heaven's sake, 
visit PastorVirgil.com and pick up some of the print teachings that I just was telling you about. You can find this one under Healing Help number 28. No matter what else you get today, get this. God wants you healed. So do we.